Oh, hello everyone. It's Susie Crypto Granny here. The date's the 2nd of November 2022 and it is 17.23 p.m. in Europe in Amsterdam time. And uh, we've got a lot to talk about today, today guys and girls. Um, the FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee, uh, they've had their meeting on the 1st and the 2nd and the policy statement, the monetary policy statement for this uh, for this uh, meeting is out at seven o'clock tonight, ET time. And uh, 7 30, 30 minutes after that, uh, Powell will talk. The chairman of the FOMC, Jeremy Powell, will talk. And it's really important to see what rhetoric he uh, talks about, whether he says there's going to be more rate hikes in December or, or next year, and what they're thinking in terms of the economic environment for the US and whether they should be rate hiking more. Now, the market is anticipating 75 basis points to bring the cash rate in the US to 4%. And I think that's seriously, seriously high. I think people are bleeding. People are not surviving in this world at the moment. Prices are up everywhere. It's just killing people. And, you know, when a 30-year fixed mortgage rate is over 7%, uh, it just kills people if they have to refinance their mortgage or pay their mortgage, which is literally doubled or quadrupled. Plus, don't forget, a lot of information out there, people are actually giving up their animals, which is pretty tough when they can't even afford, like in Australia, to buy meat for their big dogs and this sort of thing. And I think that's really, really sad. So I, I really think the FOMC should do 50 basis points. That's my view. But the market is certainly primed up for 75. And I, I just believe it's wrong. It's the wrong policy tool to use. Raising interest rates does not bring down inflation. That's number one. It just doesn't do it. And it's because of supply chain problems and also climate change and COVID and a lot of other things, okay, which we'll discuss as well. So <clears throat> clearly, everyone's waiting with bated breath to see exactly what the FOMC does today at seven o'clock tonight. And I'll certainly be watching and I'll be watching with markets as well. Currently, the Dow is at 32560. It's down 62 basis points, not much at the moment. Bitcoin is at 20407, Ethereum is at 1556, Binance at 318, XRP at 0457502, Dodge 0.1293, and so on. If we look at the market cap at the moment, it's over a trill at 1.027 trill. Volume is very low at 37 billion, and liquidity is mildly low at 4.68%. And Bitcoin dominance, which hasn't done a lot, is at 38%. 0.14 percent so i think it's going to be very interesting to see what they do the fed tonight with it's 75 basis points like the market's expecting i'm going 50 and uh the rhetoric his statement jeremy powell's statement is going to be very very important indeed that's for sure so let's cover some of the uh, macro stories at the moment and then i'll start talking about uh crypto pacific and just some of the main news stories out there at the moment. I mean, clearly I can't cover everything. There's just so much minute detail, but these are the main stories I think, uh, you know, are important. And these are the main stories that I think will drive the cryptocurrency market forward and up and beyond, okay? But we do have to wait, obviously, for the FM, FMC because every risk asset prices off the interest rate curve and the cash curve. So overnight, um, apparently North Korea was reportedly firing uh, 23 missiles at South Korea, and this is just set off again, and it just seems ridiculous. And South Korea has basically, you know, fired missiles back. And we've got this situation, obviously, in Ukraine, Russia, we've got China, whatever's going on over there, you know, and now we've got the North Koreans involved. And it just seems to me like the perfect storm, you know, all these nutcases want to take over the world and everything else. So it's a bit scary in itself. Also, China's COVID is still a massive problem, okay? Uh, there was another COVID flare-up. Uh, in our iPhone City, a main plant uh, called Foxconn, which does all the iPhones for the world's... It's the largest world's iPhone factory. They basically locked down 200,000 staff and quarantined them uh, within the factory, right? And this is a blow to Apple's earnings, and I don't like Apple. I think Apple just keeps selling the iPhone, and it's got nothing else to sell, and... Tim uh, Cook is, you know, about to retire, so why should that guy worry too much? But, you know, a lot of people fleed the, the factory because, you know, you get locked up in a factory in China and you don't know when, you know, you can leave, you don't earn any money and all this sort of thing. And, and they've still got the zero 
COVID policy, which is very, very scary indeed. Now, COVID itself is still around and 636 million people in the world are now infected. That thing goes up about 3 million every day. So I keep watching that and I keep thinking about that and what it means for world global supplies of everything and workers and this sort of thing. And um, just an, 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 an antidote to that, um, I read something today which is not even rel relatively, you know, uh, you know, direct um, of what's going on in markets. But when you start reading things like that, this, that even the cows, the Jersey cows that give out milk are stressed because of, you know, basically the, the, the global warming of climate and everything else and the lack of supply of people and everything, the cows are stretched and they're basically stressed to the max because what's happening is we're seeing climate change everywhere and we're seeing huge, incredible, intensive periods of hot weather and the cows can't yield and produce as much milk in the scorching heat, which I found amazing, right? And they reckon that something like this, even with climate change that no one's addressing, you know, affects a, a, a dairy industry, something worth $2.2 billion a year, right? And it looks like milk is, is going up and butter is going up astronomically. And again, this is inflation. We're talking about basic goods here that people need to eat to make bread going up astronomically. And if you look at the dairy inflation index from 2017, it was at 99, 99 and now the index is at 142.50, which means even the basics of life like wheat, milk, butter are going through the roof astronomically. I mean, it's just just an absolute joke when I think about it. It's just crazy what's going on. There's so many invent risks at the moment, whether it's, you know, uh, whether it's war, whether it's depletion of resources, whether it's climate change, you know, it's just a scary, scary thing. But I think ultimately uh, cryptocurrency will benefit overall when, when we see a fiat market absolutely imploding, okay, because of huge overhead debts of big governments out there that just keep funding the balance sheet with no underlying asset. They just keep, you know, borrowing money hand over fist with no no stopping for tomorrow, which is which is not a great story. Anyway, money as I mentioned, MoneyGram came out with a new app yesterday and <clears throat> they're actually offering US clients the ability to buy, sell Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin. So Litecoin got a push up overnight because of the MoneyGram, because they're, they're, they're utilizing Litecoin for their client base and buying and selling it. And also Litecoin's done well with some NFTs at the moment, okay? So that, that's very interesting. One of the largest currency, cryptocurrency options exchanges called Deribit, which I actually use, got hacked uh, from their hot wall at $28 million, right? They did withdraw, uh, they did stop withdrawals uh, they said they are set to re recover their losses. Deribit said they have all their funds, 90% of their funds, in cold wallets and storage, which is good, and it won't affect clients or anything else, and they have 99% of their user funds in cold storage. So that that's good to know. They have got good you know policies in place, but also they're insured as well, which is a great story. Uh, but, yeah, they should be looking into who uh, absconded with money in their hot wallet, which was actually hat. Now, let's talk about, uh, we'll talk about Elon Musk, we'll talk about Bitcoin, what's happening there, we'll talk about XRP, Hubie Global, DBS, Bank, uh, Circle uh, Circle as well, uh, also Crypto.com and uh, XRP, as I said. But the first thing I want to mention is Bitcoin, right? Uh, over the last quarter, Microsoft was still, micro strategy, I should say, was still buying Bitcoin. And they this year they bought 5,609 Bitcoin. The last quarter they bought 301 Bitcoin. And now they hold 130,000 Bitcoin worth $4 billion. Now, while, while this is important because what's happening is people are buying Bitcoin, holding it in their own wallets off the exchanges, and the exchanges are being stripped of Bitcoin, okay? There was another huge outflow. Uh, Binance apparently on the 29th of October and the end of October a large client, a wholesale client, literally bought more than 70,000 units of Bitcoin, which was something like $2.5 billion in Bitcoin, which went to a cold wallet, okay? Now, you know, the important thing is, and I've mentioned this before, when the Bitcoin supply has gone, there is just no Bitcoin, okay? Now, we already know, you know, about a month ago, the exchanges had about 2.4 million units of Bitcoin, but every day they are losing more and more Bitcoin. And when Bitcoin is gone, there is nothing else you can buy. You know, it's going to be on the market maybe at $5,000 higher than where it is now, right? 
<coughs> excuse me, so that my cough a bit. Mm. So it gets a bit beyond the pale where people keep selling Bitcoin. And think about it logically. They keep selling Bitcoin, but there's no supply on the exchanges, right? Now, <coughs> this um, this $70,000, as I said, was bought on Binance. And it's the largest transaction that Binance has ever seen in Bitcoin, right? And once that goes, it goes, okay? There's no doubt about it, right? Now, every day, new corporates and new clients are putting on Bitcoin for a payment system, right? With the Lightning Network, which makes it a lot quicker because it sits on top of the Bitcoin platform as a layer two technology and is faster and cheaper and all those sort of things, okay? So what we saw is uh, Lagana, Switzerland, uh, people are actually using Bitcoin and, you know, merchants are using Bitcoin as well. And basically, you know, uh, even McDonald's in Lugano, Switzerland is using Bitcoin. So everywhere in the world, we've got more usability of Bitcoin, but there's a very, very low supply, right? And low supply means one thing to me, up in price, not down in price. That's a fact, okay? Also, DBS Bank Singapore, one of the biggest banks in Singapore, uh, has applied DeFi and cryptocurrency technology to trade foreign exchange and state government securities. Now, if you remember rightly, DBS Bank is actually using Polygon's mainnet and they're doing Web3 expansion and they trade in Bitcoin, BCH, XRP and Ethereum. Uh, and again, you know, there's a huge demand for Bitcoin out of Singapore. Don't forget Singapore is one of the wealthiest countries in the world and has many, many uh, multi-millionaires and even billionaires, okay? Now, Circle received major cryptocurrency payment institution. They received a license in uh, Singapore for uh, developing their DeFi, but their Web3 as, U as well as USDC coin, okay? The Monetary Authority of Singapore has given them permission, just like Coinbase and blockchain, to have a license to operate in Singapore, which is great for Circle, okay? Uh, also, the Union Bank of Philippines launches Bitcoin and Ethereum trading. Again, more utility of Bitcoin. More Bitcoin will be taken off the exchanges and buried away. And, you know, they're basically using a Swiss crypto technology firm called Mataco, so, uh, which is a digital asset platform called Harmonize. Uh, and, and essentially, you know, they're offering their clients cryptocurrency. Also, Union Bank of the Philippines also has ATMs for Bitcoin. It's only a small bank in uh, the Philippines. They only have about 305,000, 3,500 uh, employees. But it shows you where the market's going. People are going into cryptocurrency technology and using cryptocurrency, right? And the ones that they will look at mainly is Bitcoin and, you know, hopefully XRP and a few others like that, right? Now, Justin Sun, uh, who's also the investor advisor and the advisor to Huber Global, looks like he's taking over Huber Global. Uh, you know, apparently he moved $50 million to Binance and he sold Ethereum around 1600 US. And Justin Sun's always been a hater of Ethereum. And I don't blame him because Tron is amazing. It's quick, it's fast, it costs you nothing. Ethereum is still, you know, very clunky, not very good, and still costs an arm and a leg, right? Uh, also, he tweeted on the second that <coughs> Hubie Global are going to relocate their head office to the Caribbean, right? Because it's a crypto-friendly community and great in terms of the legalities. I mean, the, the US is just too hard. Now, Sam Bankman fried from FTX, the exchange, also relocated to the Bahamas last year, right? Also, Crypto.com got a license to operate in the Cayman Islands, and it doesn't surprise because the operating environment in the US is a shocker. Justin Sun, uh, according to Financial Times interview, said he's very bullish on the Chinese relaxing their stance on cryptocurrency. He's come out with this quite a lot. And Hong Kong <coughs> enabling retail traders to buy and sell cryptocurrency retail clients so hubie token <coughs> excuse me hubie global have decided to relocate to the caribbeans from the seashells out of uh 1600 employees they're going to relocate 200 employees uh, and they've got other head, head offices in hong kong south korea japan and u.s but their main head office will be the Car Caribbeans, right? And that's like Binance with C Trade and Prime Bit. Bit they're registered in the Caribbeans as well. 
because, you know, it's much easier to deal in the Caribbean than it is in the US, which is just, you know, over the top, okay? So I mentioned MoneyGram and Litecoin. That's why Litecoin's going up. Plus, they're doing a lot with NFT games, and it's all very, very bullish for them, which is great. And the US can buy uh, on MoneyGram, Ethereum, Litecoin, and, and, and Bitcoin. Also, Crypto.com, another exchange, has... Uh, partnered with Visa to launch a World Cup NFT uh, and then in uh, World Cup NFT for auction in partnership with Crypto.com and Visa. This is an NFT event. It's waiting for the, the, the World Cup, Soccer Cup, and fans will be able to uh, buy digitised football, uh, you know, ornaments, you know, um, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, maybe cards and this sort of thing. And, you know, it's basically going to be held at FIFA Fan Festival Park in Doha Quarters. That's great for Crypto.com with Visa to launch NFTs for football collectibles. And let's mention XRP too. There is rumour out there that they may settle quick, quicker than uh, later. I hope so uh, for, for XRP holders. Um, there's been a lot of ripple moved in the last couple of days. And if you look at Wales, have said there's 198 million XRP moved. Uh, you know, there also there were some big flows with their escrow. Apparently, nine hundred thousand got put back in the escrow, and three hundred thousand was bought by a whale. But there are some big moves on XRP, and if you look at XRP technically, it's going to break out one way or the other. Okay, <coughs> so maybe if we get a bullish FOMC meeting tonight, which is good for markets, good for risk markets, it may start going up. But certainly, the catalyst is when the SEC, you know, lose their court case. And there's a lot of people against the SEC as well, including Coinbase, which may soon, you know, support XRP on their exchange, which would be a good story. <coughs> so basically, that's pretty much the news at the moment. Uh, sorry if I've missed anything really specific. Oh, Elon Musk. Yes, I've missed him. Sorry, and I need to talk about him. Definitely. <coughs> Excuse me. I've still got this cough. So Elon Musk came out and he said, if you want to get a blue tick verification on Twitter, you're going to have to pay $8 and that's get rid of trading bots and other scams and people that aren't real. And also CZ was out there talking in Portugal at a conference, a technical conference, and he mentioned that Elon, if Elon asks me to join the board of the Twitters, Twitter, the board of Twitter, I will, I will probably join, which is a great story. Because CZ, like Elon Musk, believes in freedom of speech. And that's why he wanted to invest in Twitter, okay? Uh, so he's a big supporter of the freedom of speech. Also, he said that it's not hard to incorporate payments into Twitter by, by, via Binance Pay. Binance Pay already supports, you know, hundreds of cryptocurrencies and you can easily integrate that within the Twitter system. <coughs> so CZ hints that, you know, Twitter, you know, may use Dodge, of course, and they use Bitcoin and XRP, but it also might use Binance as well, okay? And that doesn't surprise me. Binance is so cheap. It's a mega, mega story. I think it's worth over 1600 US per unit. So uh, <coughs> watch this space with Musk because it's going to be very, very interesting and CZ, absolutely. Uh, also, another thing is the US Treasury Department, oh God, the, the US and the regulatory environment, are now looking at Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter and there was some deal done allegedly with a Saudi and Arabian prince. So they're now looking into things to see uh, effectively, if there was any, uh, you know, anything done wrongly. I mean, golly, the, the US is just too too over the top with their regulations and everything. I've got to say that. But anyway, uh, Binance have come out just to support uh, Twitter and have said if you uh, do a, uh, learn and stake and do a quiz between November the 2nd to the November the 8th, you can get free for Dodge, which is a great, great initiative. Anything free is, is terrific, right? So, look, that's all I want to say, guys and girls, at the moment. Fed is coming out at 7 o'clock ET time, US time. I think, uh, what time is it in the US at the moment? I've got to have a look. It's about six hours behind Europe. It's 12.42. They'll be out at 7. And then uh, <coughs> Chairman Jeremy Powell will be talking about a meeting, you know, his meeting in 30 minutes after 7 o'clock. So we'll certainly watch this with bated breath. It's going to be very interesting. If it's 50 basis points, the risk market should rally. But what's more important is the statement uh, the Fed talks about, what they actually talk about going forward, which everyone will be listening to, including myself. So 
let's, uh, you know, wait with bated breath and uh, see what the story is. Thanks very much. And I'll uh, report to you and talk to you very soon. Thank you very much for listening.